title of this piece is Crime and Punishment or Mental Illness and Treatment. The hospital uses behavior control techniques, which are illegal. They use a system of both punishment and rewards to coerce us into joining their sham treatment program, known as the phase program, and into attending so-called team meetings, which are held once monthly. The treatment team meetings, not to be confused with the phase treatment program, in which only 19% of detainees elect to participate, are held between one detainee and two to four staff, collectively referred to as a Wellness and Recovery Team, or WRT for short. Their ostensible purpose is to evaluate the progress, or lack thereof, of the detainee in his day-to-day functioning and state of mind. In reality, its purpose is to provide written documentation that can be used against the detainee at any future date, most damagingly as an adverse report in a civil commitment trial. Any staff member can add their own comments to the chart, often just to give the false appearance of performing some valuable clinical function. The detainee has no appeal rights to challenge entries placed into his chart, no matter how demonstrably false. This is a practice commonly referred to as smoking the chart. The first entries in the chart come from the district attorney's office at the time of the original criminal prosecution. Over the years, many staff add entries to the chart, often using the chart itself as a source for their entries. Eventually, state evaluators, who supposedly work independent of the DMH, but really collude with them hand in glove, receive the chart. Their reports, often based entirely upon the chart that is chock full of mutually referencing circular opinions and citations, are given to the county DAs, who will then prosecute, and almost certainly when, the defendant's commitment to a lifetime civil confinement. The team's other function is to act as a kind of surrogate parent to the detainee's child, if you will, to treat the detainee as if he were a child. This is accomplished by threatening to pull his level, thereby further limiting what few rights he still enjoys. The past system requires that detainees hold a level if they intend to go to the courtyards, the gym, the grill, and the canteen. Not attending team itself automatically results in a loss of level. They're unable to get any exercise, for example, because they're never allowed to get to the gym. If they're fortunate enough to have money to supplement the awful diet provided by CSH with better food purchased from the grill without a level, he has prevented better nutrition. For the roughly 19% of detainees who participate in the phase treatment program, life is easier with more liberties and greater freedom of movement. The newest proposals from the Kramer administration call for taking it up a notch. In this proposal, the connection between attending phase treatment or the treatment team and various rewards and punishments are more explicit. The rewards of phase participation are now clearly spelled out, as are the punishments for refusing to attend. That we are punished for our refusal to submit to the travesty of DMH treatment clearly violates the rights the U.S. Supreme Court says we retain. We're not criminals, remember. We served our sentences in prison. So we retain all of our rights except the right to bear arms. We can even vote. But we're being imprisoned, threatened and extorted into participating in a treatment program that is considered a sham by the California Psychiatric Association. To coerce us into joining their miserable treatment program deprives us of the right to informed consent and to choose treatment based upon its merits, a right assured us by California law. Our complaints to Mr. Kramer of this policy's unlawfulness have been answered by him with a simple response so sue us. Interesting point. Maybe that's the problem. Perhaps it's only when state officials become criminally liable for violating our rights, not just civilly, not just being sued, but when they become criminally liable for their actions and can go to prison for breaking the law, perhaps then we will see some relief from their threats and extortions. Instead, we are being treated like prisoners and criminally deprived of our liberties. 
and the Supreme Court, with a wink and a nod to the state legislatures, has declared that we are not being punished, but lawfully detained to protect society and to receive treatment to make us better. Clarence Thomas, in writing for the majority in Hendricks v. Kansas, stated that we are not to be punished and to be held in the least restrictive manner possible. That California has failed miserably to safeguard the rights we possess more than 10 years after the Hendricks decision speaks volumes of the complicity between governors, legislators, and the courts in advancing a policy that is a clear and present danger to all of our liberties.